Yes, Lord, you are the center of my joy. My brothers and sisters, if you're not too mean, grab your Bibles and go with me to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 and put a note in there. Grab your Bibles and go with me to the book of Galatians chapter 5. My brothers and sisters, unless you've been under a rock somewhere, you know we have been in this series entitled Loud Healers. Loud Healers. Let's get right into it with our definition of loud healers. Loud healers are spiritual and practical antidotes prescribed to free one or relieve one from the venom of brokenness and bondage. Loud healers are spiritual and practical antidotes prescribed to relieve one from the venom of brokenness and bondage. And so, my brothers and sisters, make no mistake about it. When we are born into this world, we're born into this um uh, this state of brokenness. It is natural. It is innate for humanity to be born in brokenness. And we have the awesome challenge, charge, and responsibility, but we'll receive the victory when we break that cycle of brokenness and bondage and become free, also known as liberated. But I'm here to argue, my brothers and sisters, that I cannot be liberated if I refuse the journey. Many of us want to be set free, and many of us want to be liberated, but we don't want to do what it takes to be liberated. And I want to suggest to you that if you want to be liberated, you have to engage a healing journey. Thus, I am your chief healing facilitator. This is my third week with facilitating tools that will help you on your healing journey. Can I just stop right now and prophetically declare for all of my broken people, all of my sick people, all my my people that's dealing with circumstances and issues of bondage you know who you are because you're looking at me today i want to tell you that you are about to be free Oh, my God. I'm going to say it again. I want to tell you that you are about to be free. Do you hear the words that are coming off of your mouth, out of my mouth? My brothers and sisters, I feel the chains coming off of you right now. I prophetically declare that which has had you bound, that which is holding you down, that situation, that circumstance, those individuals, freedom is near you today. I need for you, before I even get into the word, to open up your mouth and to lift your hands from wherever you are and declare in the spirit I am free come on do it I am free now for that same and with that same energy I need you to take those hands and type in the comment section I am free come on do it on YouTube do it on Facebook I am free and so my brothers and sisters here we are in this Galatians 5 text our residential scripture with our resident theologian Paul who writes Galatians 5 and just to remind people or introduce some to the context of this particular scripture here Paul my brothers and sisters pins this letter to the churches of Galatia the churches of Galatia because my brothers and sisters they were being bamboozled tricked and hooded wing out of their initial understanding on what it means to receive Christ in their life. They had received Christ in their life as a free will offering, as an act of God's justification. But here some outside influencers was coming to them to tell them that they did not have everything that they needed because they did not go through the proper protocol um, to get what they needed. And so Paul, my brothers and sisters, comes back and tells them you receive Christ not by proper protocol, but you receive Christ because of the sacrifice he made on Calvary's cross. Do not buy in to the outside influences. He encourages them to get back, back to their spiritual center. And my brothers and sisters, let me suggest to you again, as I have in past in these teachings, that you're not going to get very far if you have not identified your spiritual center, if you have not identify that reservoir, that nucleus, that space where you go to draw spirituality from. Because my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that since this is a healing journey of spirituality, you need to know where to start from. And my brothers and sisters, in this Galatians 5 text, Paul uses this vernacular of fruit, is this singular vernacular, but it is so unique how Paul 
my brothers and sisters deal with this thing called fruit because he says with this single fruit it sprouts out nine dimensions it's, it, it's like having a apple with nine different dimensions sprouting out of it or to slice it up in nine different ways and he calls my brothers and sisters these nine dimensions the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the spirit and it is these um, nine dimensions in the fruit of the spirit that Paul Paul suggests that our healing agents, he he in he admonishes the church to engage in these nine different dimensions of healing, my brothers and sisters, that they may be set free. And so in week number one, we talked about the first um, healing agent or the first dimension of this fruit of the spirit, which was joy. Week number two, we talked about faithfulness. I'm excited about week number three, hence the reason I decided to to come before Lake because I wanted to set the tone even in my background because week number three is peace. Did you hear what I just said? Peace, peace. Week number three is peace. And look at the text here. My brothers and sisters, Galatians chapter five, verse 22. Once again, it's not much to read here, but we're going to get really in depth in its uh, rhetorical and etymological structure. Here is what Paul says in Galatians five and 22 to the churches of Galatia. Paul says, by contrast, the fruit of the spirit is peace. By contrast, the fruit of the spirit is peace. And so when we look at that word peace, once again, remind you that because it's in the New Testament canon, it is a hint, hint, telltale sign that perhaps is der um, der derivation is from a Greek perspective. And so we look at that word peace, that word peace. Peace in the Greek is pronounced irene, irene, e i r e n e, irene, irene. And wow, does this understanding of irene or peace, my brothers and sisters, break down in some dimensions that's going to run deep into the well of our healing today. It's going to set us up for breakthrough because I'm going to help you understand the meaning of irene, the meaning of irene, the meaning of peace in which Paul my brothers and sisters expounds in this particular pericope. And so when we're dealing with irony, I want us to look at this irony or peace on many levels. The first level, somebody type in a com uh, comment section, soul, just type in soul, S-O-U-L, soul, soul. And so my brothers and sisters, from a contextual perspective, Paul essentially says to the churches of Galatia, God has already saved your soul. So so don't allow other folks to call that into question. Oh, my God. He says you have allowed these outside influencers to come and call into question something that God has already done. He said you are saved. So walk in irony. Walk in peace peace of your soul salvation my brothers and sisters may i suggest to you that you must stand firm in the god who saved your soul somebody got to put that in the comment section tweet it take a picture do something with it you must stand firm in the god who saved your soul i like that new testament writer who wrote that a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways my brothers and sisters notice that each week i kind of start this thing off on a divine perspective, a spiritual perspective, a, a divine connection perspective, because I don't want us to get too far away from the ultimate source of our healing, and that is God. When God came into your life and saved your sin sick soul, saved your dying soul, your decaying soul, your infected soul, God literally disinfected that which was infected because you made a concerted effort to convert confirm your relationship with God and my brothers and sisters once you do that the enemy is mad and the enemy will dispatch other demonic sources known as people because it's spirits working within people I talked about that Thursday on our prayer call spirits working within people you got to know the right opponent the opponent is not the person because Paul or the pseudo Pauline writer said my brothers and sisters we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against spiritual people things, the spiritual things. And my brothers and sisters, I want to suggest to you that from a spiritual 
spiritual perspective, you must be confirmed in your God-like identity. Don't ever let anyone take that away from you, your knowledge and understanding of God. Paul said they're coming to try to rob you of the best thing that you had, and God is the best thing that you had. And so if I'm going to have peace, I got to be concretized and stand firm in the peace or the irony that God placed in my soul. Yeah, soul is number one. Let's look at another dimension of RNA. My brothers and sisters, another dimension is safety. Oh my God, you have soul, but then my brothers and sisters, you have safety. What is safety? Get this, here, here's an understanding of safety that I believe that that's gonna blow our mind. Safety from this perspective is to live free from the bondage of people. Mm. Did you hear what I said? Safety is to live free from the bondage of people. You notice I said, my brothers and sisters, that 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 loud healers is that spiritual and practical antidote that are prescribed to relieve you from bondage and brokenness. Well, here's the element of bondage that a lot of you all need to be relieved from, and that is the bondage of people, the bondage of trying to please people, the bondage of people having a stronghold over you. Paul says, my brothers and sisters, y'all got what you need. You, you got what you need. Why would you allow these people to come in here and mess with your mind? Just walk in what you already have. Just because someone comes with a good idea, every good idea is not a God idea. And people will come from all different types of places and perspectives to try to get you to subscribe and to ascribe to something that God does not intend for you to ascribe to. Get this now. Get this key point. Change your password to terminate unlimited access to your life. Mm. You got to do it again. You must change your password to terminate unlimited access to your life. May I suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that there are too many people that has the proverbial password to your life. You have a all access pass that you have dispatched to too many people and you don't understand because discernment has not went forth. Some of those people are on a strategic assignment from the enemy to keep you in oppression, to keep you in depression to keep you in defeat, to keep you in bondage. And you know what you uh, do to lock somebody out of your account? My brothers and sisters that don't want to get out, you change the password. And my brothers and sisters, here is your new password that's going to help you terminate those who have unlimited access in your life. You ready for the password? I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> in fact, I already gave it to you. The password is peace, peace, peace. P-E-A-C-E. -E. Change your password to peace. You must make up in your mind that today is my day to walk in peace. And my brothers and sisters, that's what's going to make it safe for you to walk in freedom from other folks who have pulled you down. If you want to come out of the hands of those who have oppressed you, those relationships, my brothers and sisters, that you have established, that you know that are not developing you, but they are destroying you, that are not growing you up but are blowing you up that are not um digesting well in your spirit but they are making you uh spiritually sick emotionally sick my brothers and sisters mentally decapitated my brothers and sisters you got to take ownership over your life today with irony and suggest to yourself mm -mm, the password has now been changed and my brothers and sisters let me say this to you when you change the password be very judicious who gets the password when you walk in peace my brothers and sisters you don't have to go out my brothers and sisters on a billboard or on a on a megaphone to say i got peace your peace is not in what you say your peace is in how you operate because many people are saying stuff but their actions does not line up with what they are saying and so my brothers and sisters if you want to walk in freedom and safety you must ascribe to peace P. Paul said to the church you you were safe but now your safety is compromised because you are listening to folk who does not mean you well so you have this understanding of irony from a soul perspective you have this understanding of irony or peace from a safety perspective but let me give you another perspective how about security 
Oh, my God. How about security? See, safety is to live free from the bondage of people, but its fraternal twin is security. And security is the refusal to allow my atmosphere to be corrupted. Oh, somebody didn't just hear what I said. I said that security is the refusal to allow my atmosphere to be corrupted. My brothers and sisters, Paul said that these outside of outside influencers have come in and literally altered the culture that we have already established. Paul Lev had established a culture of victory, of freedom in God, the freedom from bondage, the freedom from brokenness. And now the churches of Galatia have literally moonwalked back and really literally allowed the culture that had been established to be torn down. Paul says you need to have peace. You need to have security. You need to have irony that literally, my brothers and sisters, stands as a refusal to allow your atmosphere to be corrupted. Get this now and I need somebody to get it well or maybe even put in the comment section or save it for later. Peace is the tool needed to rebuild culture. Peace is the tool needed to rebuild culture. My brothers and sisters, because you are living in a culture, in a space, in an atmosphere, in a setting that breeds chaos, you must change the culture because you cannot totally walk in liberation while yet subscribing to chaos and so what do I need to do I need to get a tool tools are used to rebuild things when contractors or carpenters want to build I was talking to one carpenter that's a skillful carpenter that's a masterful carpenter and I remember asking him how is it that you do things so effortlessly how did you how is it that you do things so fluently and that carpenter said to me it's all in the tools <laughs> some people can't do what I do because they don't have the right to and my brothers and sisters may I suggest that the reason why a lot of us have an atmosphere of chaos because you ain't using the right tool you need to pick the tool of peace and begin to rebuild the culture how do I do that my brothers and sisters anything that's in my space anything that's in my world that is moving antithetical to the culture of peace that I'm trying to establish, my brothers and sisters, it must be eradicated immediately. You hear what I'm saying? We need to eradicate things that are coming to disrupt the culture of peace in our life immediately. My brothers and sisters, many of us are failing in rebuilding the culture in our life because we have not located the direct placement of chaos. Mm. Many of us, my brothers and sisters, have failed in rebuilding the culture of our life because we have not located the direct source of chaos. How can you eradicate chaos when you don't know or refusing to accept where chaos is coming from? And sometimes, get this now, chaos may be coming from people you deeply care about. But just because you deeply care about them does not mean that they should be allowed in the atmosphere to interrupt, to destroy your peace. Have you ever heard of something called loving someone from a distance, appreciating someone from a distance? Some of you all need to give a long distance has to some people who are so chaotic. We have to eliminate chaos. Why? So that we can have security. My brothers and sisters, you have this element of soul with irony. You have this element of safety with irony. You have this element of security with irony. Can we go deeper? Can we go deeper? Can we go deeper? Let me give you this one. Then you have the element of a smile. Smile. Smile, smile. You have the element of a smile. My brothers and sisters, another dimension of this word irony is felicity. Felicity, my brothers and sisters, means to acquire happiness. And happiness is the mechanism that will put a smile on one's face. I'm going to say that again. This another understanding of irony comes from this word felicity. Felicity means to acquire happiness. And happiness is 
is the mechanism that places a smile on one's face. What am I trying to say, my brothers and sisters? I'm trying to say God wants to give you your smile back. And in order for you to get your smile back, you have to move into irony. Here is a key point that I want you to write down or tweet it out or put it on Facebook or even type it in the comment section. Here it is. Peace is the ultimate brush that will paint a smile on your face. Did you hear what I said? Peace is the ultimate brush that will paint a smile on your face. My brothers and sisters, when it is that you have this frown, this culture of disappointment, this culture of sadness, this culture of walking around uh, like you've been sucking on lemons all day, when you have a culture of sour lemons that have been placed over your life and it seems like every day is rainy, there is no sun like it is out here today, there is no peace like it is on the lake today my brothers and sisters it's because you have not used the proper paintbrush you must paint a smile on your face and the way you paint a smile on your face is with the brush of peace let me tell you something your happiness is worth more than money Oh, uh, no. Am I trying to perpetuate a cycle of poverty? No. No. Am I trying to perpetuate a cycle of brokenness? No. No. Am I trying to tell you to sit down and do nothing? No. But your happiness is more valuable than money because you can have all the money in the world, but all the money in the world will not equate to happiness. That's why you see millionaires committing suicide. That's why you see billionaires strung out on drugs. That's why you see people with acquisitional wealth that are still unhappy because money is not the tool to happiness but happiness is the tool that should help you go get some money <laughs> when i am happy when i am joyful when i'm walking in peace when i'm walking in irony when i'm walking in felicity or when i have had the opportunity to acquire felicity felicity the smile is on my face and now i move into a dimension that is greater than the one that was destroying me and my brothers and sisters so we have this idea of soul we have this idea of safety we have this idea of security we have this idea of smile and the fifth and final thing of irony of peace that i want to give to you is success yes my brother success and so this other or another dimension of irony is prosperity irony breaks off to our english word prosperity and my brothers and sisters prosperity in the simplest form means success Paul says things were already successful, but church, you have allowed the outside influences to disrupt your success. Can I prophetically declare as I prepare to end this sermon today? I don't want to expand on this point because success is not something that needs a lot of talking. Success is something that needs action. So if you want to be successful, if you want to start your journey of success to see the doors open for you, the windows raised for you, the prosperity coming in unto you, you need to walk in irony. You need to walk in peace. Here's a prophetic word that God told me to give you. That your success plight led by peace starts today that your success plight led by peace start today you're about to encounter some miraculous engagement if you submit to peace let's pray family god we thank you for this word and this is where i ended on success this is where i want to hone in on our prayer. God, there are some people who have been struggling in this pandemic. There are some people who have been struggling in this world. There are some people who have been struggling to make sense out of their circumstance. And all they want is a little bit of success. God, all they want is to encounter a little bit of your victory. But God, would you give them that peace that surpasses all understanding that will come over them like a cool breeze that will flow like an ever running lake. I speak it in their life that today is the start of their successful plight. 
peace now in their minds, hearts, souls, and spirit. I declare in Jesus' name.